Let me just start over in the coursework uh, application. A couple things you know about there. The assignment two grades have been posted. Um, as you go through and look at your assignment two grades, if there's any sort of comments about things that are missing or that just got lost somewhere along the way, there's a lot of stuff that gets passed back and forth between you and the TAs through the Dropbox and stuff like that. So it's entirely possible and quite typical that things get overlooked or misplaced. Just, you know, if you have the item that's missing, just let us know about it. Send the message to me or the TAs and we'll kind of get everything adjusted appropriately. So. Yeah, don't feel bad. A lot, uh, a lot of people forget to go ahead and put in the 3D version of the model or just some little piece that's missing. And if that's your case, no worries. You're not going to get massively penalized for that. Just go ahead and let us know that it is there and put it up on the Dropbox and everything sort of gets adjusted. Hopefully the comments the TAs are putting in are a little bit helpful in terms of understanding what they're looking for. Also this week we're going to start posting examples of people's work for one and two online. And we'll put some things around here so you can sort of see some of the other cool things that people are working on. Because you get so focused on your own project, you sort of lose sight that there's a lot of other good stuff going on here, too. Okay, on the coursework website, you'll also find the class schedule through this Google Calendar. You will see that there's going to be some office hours tonight. Uh, Spandana will be here. You have to warn her about that. We have the MATLAB class coming in right at 6. So it's from 7 onward here, 6 up before, she probably, you probably need to be working uh, out of the room a little bit. There'll be some office hours tomorrow with Sino, again on Thursday night and even on Friday during the day. And I'll be joining the TAs on Wednesday night and Thursday night, okay, in terms of being here. But we're also going to give you some time to work on things together in class today. So hopefully you'll be able to get this homework number three polished off pretty quickly and get ready for our next phase where instead of looking at sort of just creating building elements, we're going to take a look at sort of a higher level view of Really, we often start with, oh, you know, a larger project, kind of a big conceptual design that will start, oh, breaking down and subdividing and going from very general forms to more detailed forms in a very top-down way. And we'll start kind of working in that sort of process to design something a little bit bigger than these little research stations and single houses that we've been working on. Out on the calendar, you will also find, we're going to start just uh, putting out the assignment deadlines and stuff like that. If you're planning ahead, the next assignment, assignment four, will be due on the 12th. And we'll pass that out on <coughs> Thursday and get you all started. That's probably going to be a group assignment. So if you have someone that you really like working with, look across the room, stare into their eyes and say, you, you you're the one I want, OK? Because you're going to be uh, engaged for the next two weeks or something like that. So do some thinking about. Who's someone whose schedule works well with yours and compatible and yada, yada, yada? Because it's uh, yeah, sometimes group assignments are a little bit hard to coordinate. Okay, let me go ahead and switch over to the slides. We'll start over there. And what we're going to do today is really revisit a couple sort of nuances on rendering. We are going to look at the walkthrough material and really kind of give you all the things you need to know to create a successful walkthrough, give you some guidance about what to complete for the assignment. And uh, for the very last part of class, hopefully we'll get done with most of that just for the first half of class. The last part we're just going to leave up to you. So um, we'll be around answering questions, kind of treat it like office hours. If you have your assignment here, we'll work on it together. Just kind of answer just any questions you have. But let's see if we can get a lot of three polished off so we can hit the ground running for four on Thursday. Okay. In terms of Revit and rendering, we want to just reiterate there's these steps to success. There is a workflow to this where you create the model, you add things like contextual elements and lights to the model, you define your 3D views, render them into static images, fine tune them, seeing if you can sort of pull out the nuances you want. And if they're not quite what you need, you go back and iterate. You go back and sort of adjust the model, adjusting the materials, maybe adding some more lights, whatever it is. But it's a very common process to go through and just keep on iterating. And one thing you have to do is to sort of decide when you want to stop iterating. Yeah, so you need to kind of come up with some sort of answer for the assignment. You're coming up with some sort of views which are presenting your models, showing us that you know how to apply materials and work with lighting and sun and things like that. Yeah, but know when to stop. For example, you don't need to go ahead and apply materials and render every room in the house. I'm really only asking for a single exterior rendering and one interior rendering. OK, so if you want to, feel free to go ahead and put objects throughout the house and worry about the colors and the materials. But you don't need to. You really only need to go ahead and show me one view that you really like okay, and focus on that. And if it can't really be seen by the camera, we won't worry about so much what's going on back over there. Okay. 
In terms of the exterior rendered views, the big issue is really just setting the quality anywhere from draft to best and choosing good res resolution so that as you work, you don't penalize yourself with a very slow rendering time, but as you get further along in the process and you understand things, you can take a little bit longer to do the rendering. Okay, the sun was all important when we were doing exterior renderings. Sun really is dictated, dictated in one of two ways, either as a just fixed point of light, okay, that can be set in every view. It's sort of very quick to do things that way. It's not always very accurate because you will notice that as you move between the different views, if the sun is always in the top right corner, okay, the shadows really aren't accurate. People will start to notice that the sun always seems to be hitting your house in the same direction. So it's actually much better to go ahead and choose a specific location, give it a date, give it a time, and even think about really what date and time you want to be using because you know, if you want to have a lot of sun coming in through the windows very low, you might choose a winter time when the sun's low in the sky and you'll actually get that effect. In the summertime, sun's very high in the sky, so if you have any overhang on your building, it'll be bright outside, but that overhang prevents the sun from actually coming in and hitting your surfaces. So you get to kind of choose sort of what time of day. Noontime is very high in the sky time, so sun is bright outside but doesn't necessarily flood in through the windows. Later in the afternoon when the sun's low in the sky, it comes in at more of an angle. So go ahead and choose the sort of the specific time that's going to give you the effect that you want. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate one last thing about rendering the exterior views. Because for the most part, I think people are in pretty good shape. Actually, I should ask. In terms of what you have to do for your assignment, do most of you have a pretty good feel for what your, what your view is going to be and how you're going to set the sun and any big questions about that? Okay, good. For the most part, that tends to be a fairly easy one for people. I want to sort of look a little bit about this issue of background style. This is really only going to affect the people who are working in Revit 2011. So it won't affect these machines here. We're still on 2010. But if you have Revit 2011 loaded on your machine, and you can, there's no reason not to other than that it's sort of taking up more disk space. But let me go ahead and show you what the difference is and show you may, why you may want to go ahead and get that thing loaded up. Okay, right now there's Revit 2010. Let me uh, pop on out again and I'll open 2011. You'll see that 2011 in many ways is just like 2010. It was really what I'll think of as an incremental release that refined some specific features and made them more powerful, okay, but didn't fundamentally change things in a very deep way. So I'm going to open up that same model we've been working with. Okay, in 2011 instead, and you'll see that in many ways it looks just the same as it has in 210. One of the big differences you'll see though is that the properties palette where the instance properties or the type properties are displayed is now actually sort of affixed here to the left side of the window. So it's something that when you work with it this way, you, I think you'll find is actually a little bit more convenient. You don't have to kind of keep on opening the properties. That window stays open. It's modeless. Okay, so you can always kind of click on something and see what its properties are over here. And that's actually just sort of a nice little working convenience. Okay, here's the view we were playing with. Let me go ahead and go to the rendering settings and kind of talk about the issue of the background images. And the idea is by default, we can go through and choose sky, we can choose a specific color. Let me say sky with very few clouds. That's kind of the way it's often set up. I'll just say low because I want to do something very quickly. Let me just render that ever so quickly. And we'll contrast the effect of a couple of different choices here. So we'll let it go through and do its rendering. It's only going to consider the one light source, the sun, right now. And that's fine for a quick rendering. It's a little dark. I should probably look at what date and time it is. I'll let that finish. Let me give you a tip about the renderings, too. If, as you're working, you want to speed things up, you could actually turn off the planting. Use visibility graphics to turn off the planting. Your renderings will go a lot quicker. Then turn the planting right back on again before you do your final rendering. That will sort of speed things up, a little bit less waiting. Let me see if I can bring up the exposure a little bit more. Okay, it's a little bit washed out. 
It'll sort of get the effect. Let me just even check out that my date, my sun settings look a little bit odd, so let me see what's going on. Oh, because it's really just sort of set up actually very low in the sky. Let me switch that around a little bit to be um, San Jose in the afternoon. That'll be a little bit better. Okay, But this will be sufficient to demonstrate my point, or the initial one, is really just this whole issue of the sky. There's that blue sky. And that may not be exactly what you have in mind. Okay, So we can go through and change that. Color lets you go through and choose a specific color you want to put in the background. So you can make it a deep midnight blue or some color that you like better if you're trying to achieve an artistic effect. Or you can go through and use an image. An image lets you go through and choose something off of your hard disk, some image, a photograph, that you just want to put in the background that might give it the right effect. Now, this is very useful if, for example, oh, I'm going to go out to my little Revit folder. And I have some nice background images hanging around. I can put in skies that have sort of specific effects to them. I can put very sunsetty skies in there. I can put in, oh, park scenes. It's very useful if you're trying to basically put your building into a context, okay, and you have an image of sort of the surrounding cityscape. You can actually drop your building with a little bit of work right into the place where it will be located. And that'll just help increase you know, it's the usefulness of your rendering, because you'll really sort of understand what it looks like in that context. Let me go ahead and choose, oh, kind of this very sunsetty looking sky. I will choose it. Let me stretch that, kind of something like that. And we will try actually using that image behind the building. I'll just say OK. And when I render this again, again, I'll just set it at low, because I'm really just trying to sort of establish the effect of that sky. I don't need it to be at a high resolution right now to figure out whether or not I like the look of that sky. Okay, what's going to happen is the building will render in front of the image, the trees will render in front of the image, and that image is really going to be pasted into the background. Okay. Okay, in this case, it, the image is probably not a really good match for the sun settings and the overall condition here. If you know that's not quite what you have in mind, you can go on out and just choose a different image. See what else do I have that looks interesting. I'll do that nice fiery sunset. Now, if I'm going to do a fiery sunset, let me get a comment on that and put that behind there. Okay, I might want to actually go through and adjust the time to be more like a sunset time because there's not going to be in any internal consistency checking. It's up to you to make sure that your building isn't in the bright sun of the day and have a, a sunset in the background. You have to sort of figure that out. So let's go ahead and I'll make that even, oh, like 8 or something like that. Pretty late in the afternoon or in the early evening. Summertime, so I think I'm going to get away with this. I'll render the model. And let's see what that looks like. Yes? Um, every view is independent okay. in its setting, so not exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, what'll happen is that setting of San Jose afternoon being 8 p.m., okay, that sort of stays the same. Okay, but the issue of sort of the brightness or the darkness of the image, it's kind of artistic. Not exactly what I have in mind, but artistic. See if I can get anything out of there. There's just really not a whole lot of sunlight to work with at 8, eight o'clock. But now they tend to be independent of each other. Okay. So you can go ahead and you know put images into the background. And that's actually sort of a useful thing to do, not only for these exterior renderings, but it's also quite nice in the interior renderings. And let me show you what I have in mind there. What I like to do for those interior renderings is as follow. Let me, oh, I'll switch out of this view. I'll go to one of those interior views. Okay, This is the one we were working with. We got that big window in the background. So the idea is, the way we've rendered it so far, that big window is just pointing to a lot of very bright light out there. There's really nothing when you look through that window. 
What can we do about that? We can do the same thing. We'll don't lose me now. Okay, rendering settings. Oh, let's go ahead and we'll say interior. I'll leave the sun only. I'll leave that alone. Okay, again, these settings would be the same. So this whole single day still San Jose. That early or the afternoon did carry across and still 8 p.m. Let me go ahead and switch that around a little bit better. More of an afternoon time. Okay, and I can apply an image to the background. What that'll do is, oh, let me find something here. If I want the idea that my building is sort of located in a park or has some very green sort of things out there in the background, so I'm not just sort of looking at it light, I can choose that. Say OK. I'll give that a low again because I'm just sort of interested in the overall effect, not exactly the fineness of the rendering. So let's take a look. What's going to happen, it's going to put the image in the very far background. So old Dwayne here who's walking into the building, and even the fence, they'll be in the foreground in front of the image. Okay. The image we placed in the background, it isn't affected by the lighting conditions. So you have to make sure to choose an image that's appropriate for the lighting you have set up. Yeah, what you got? Um, can we get an image on the 2010 No, nah, 2010, it's just not, it's only in 2011 where that option's available. Okay, so uh, it's kind of a preview of the coming attraction. What we're going to do is move you all over to 2011 over the next couple of weeks. Okay, but. In the meantime, in 2010, you don't have it available. <coughs> okay, so you sort of start to get the effect that now it looks like there's something out there which at least gives you a backdrop. It's something to look at as opposed to looking at just a lot of bright white light. It doesn't actually cut down on the amount of light. Okay. Say again? Oh, in this case, I just turned it all off because it's just really the sun only. Yeah, but the same sort of thing I can go through. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, I didn't save any of those things from what we did last time. So I can start playing that game. I just keep on starting from scratch. Again, this being the very rough version, it's a little bit lit up, but I should do all the same things. You know, turn on the bouncing of the light to fill out the light and kind of really brighten the whole space up, soften these shadows, kind of bring up the quality. Okay, doesn't actually affect the image back there. The image stays pretty much the same. Uh, ah. Let's show you where that's stored. What happens is when you create a rendering, you have a couple choices here. You can either save it to the project or you can export it. So let's show you both. Saving to the project has this effect. It'll let you give it a name. And I'll call it, oh, the interior with background. Okay. When I do that, what happens is, and I close up this. Di uh, the rendering dialog. When you scroll on down there, you'll actually see renderings are kind of hanging around right down in here. So you can choose a rendering, or you can choose some of the earlier ones. That's kind of closer to what we did last time. White sky in the background, green sky in the background, or green background in it. So all these are kind of floating around down in here. They're kind of hanging on that section. Let's go back to the rendering dialog, though, and show you the other place you can save them. Let me go back over to interior. Okay, so here I am. I've got that view. Let's go back to rendering. I can show the last rendering that was done. I can save it to the project or I can export it. And when you export it, you get the choice of saving it as a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF file. Okay, this would be very useful if you want to take that rendering and bring it into Photoshop because you're going to sort of enhance it in Photoshop or just take it over to PowerPoint or Microsoft Word or whatever. It's just a JPEG or a PNG or a BMP, any of those file formats, and you can sort of pass them around to whoever you want to. So a lot of people will take the renderings, then take them into Photoshop and add a little more you know, detail to them by pasting in objects inside Photoshop instead. Okay. 
Let's pop back over here to the slides for a second. The background pattery, patterns, it lets you choose how the sky is going to be rendered, again, only in 2011. On the interior, okay, we had the whole issue of the big thing was lighting and really working with lighting, choosing first the right scheme, interior, exterior, making sure that you're at least getting the range of the light it's looking for in the right zone. If you say exterior, it's looking for very, very bright sunlight. Okay, if you say interior, it's going to be a much narrower range and give you more detail um, uh, uh, from the light, the limited light that's available on the interior. And you can choose whether to consider the sun or the artificial lights, or both. Okay, so let's kind of show you a variation on that scheme. Really, as you did the lighting for interior and nighttime views, it was really all about the notion of, or really, that's why I keep on harping on this, adjusting the exposure dialog really, really helps you out. And the reason I really harp on that is, for several years I was doing this, and I didn't pay nearly enough attention to the exposure dialog. So I'd spend all my time trying to add more lights in, trying to change the model material colors, and it really wasn't nearly as effective as this little notion of just sort of adjusting the exposure. So I really like to sort of reinforce that because you can get an awful lot of mileage out of that just by changing the high and the low value of the light considered and letting it rescale. You can get just really a lot of detail out of something that otherwise looks too dark. So, oh. Let me go and pop them back over here. And just as a variation on the theme, we did some interior renderings and turned on some interior lights to make that happen. I want to show you actually the whole notion of nighttime rendering, because nighttime renderings can again be sort of very intriguing. They're very interesting. They look good. Okay, so it's just another artistic effect you can go through and create. Okay, to do the nighttime rendering, I could do this in 2011 or 2012, doesn't, or, two, or 2010, excuse me. Doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is go switching back out to oh, the exterior ground view. In fact, what I will do is let me go ahead and I'll go back into 2011, or 2010, excuse me, just so I don't confuse things. So we're all looking at the same dialogues. I'll open that project here. Okay, and here I'm looking at this exterior. Okay, if I'm going to set this up at night, here's a, there are a couple things I might want to think about. Okay, setting things to be night is actually pretty easy. If we just go through and say turn off the sun, or we set it to a time late in the evening, okay, late in the afternoon or early evening, okay, it'll actually go through and the sun will be down in the sky. We won't get much effect from the sun. That's going to be pretty easy. What we typically need to do to make an exterior rendering good is add some lighting, and we'll add it in two places. We tend to add lights on the inside of the building because if you don't have lights on the inside of the building, all those big plate glass windows just show up like dark black surfaces. They don't actually sort of show you anything. They're like just mirrors, okay? And they're not very interesting that way. So it's much more interesting to actually add lights on the inside and look at them from the outside because you can sort of see the whole building glittering that way. The other type of lighting we may want to add for a nighttime rendering is just a little bit of outdoor flood lighting or something to kind of highlight the architectural features. So for example, there's this big sort of stone wall here. I can put some lighting in front of that, kind of shining up on the wall, and just get a little bit of you know, detail on that. I'm calling out just a little bit of the architectural feature there. Okay, So let's kind of put those, both those types of lighting in, and then we'll take a look at actually what things look like. Okay. For the interior lighting, I could go ahead and put floor lamps in there. It's probably easier for me just to go ahead and put some ceiling lights on. So let me go into the ceiling plan view, and I'll just hang some lights, kind of like we have here in this room. Just some oh, pendant lights hanging from the ceiling in some of the major rooms, just so it's not so dark inside the space. So I'm going to go to the ceiling plan for the first floor. Uh, I got some nice ceilings in there, so I can go out and some, get some components. I'll load up some uh, lighting fixtures. And I was going to get these pendant lamps, these linear pendant lamps. So uh, let me get the two lamp version. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just hang some of these. I'm going to hang some in the conference room. I'm not being very precise about this, because really what I'm trying to do now is just kind of create an overall level of light. If I was being careful and we were doing our lighting design, it would probably look a whole lot better because 
we wouldn't just have uniform lighting. We could sort of really customize the lighting to be just what we liked. So that's just some lights in those front rooms. I'm actually going to do it up on the second floor also because I have some rooms that are facing the front of the building. Oh, again, I'll place some components. And I'm going to put some lights just up in that. Uh, there's like a break room at the top there. That's again just lighting to sort of fill in so we're not looking at big black plate glass windows. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually put a little flood lighting around the outside of the building. And for that, I'm going to go to the first floor plan. Oh, let me, I'm going to turn off the cropping right now just so I can sort of see a little further out towards the sidewalk. Because when I put these floodlights in there, you know, they're kind of right on the boundary of what the cropping had shown. So down in this region, right in front of this uh, stone wall here, I'm going to put a little flood lighting right in here. Okay, For flood lights, if you go out to the components, you'll actually find, let me load some up. In lighting, oh, what do I have in here? I've got to find them. They're called spotlights. There it is. Spotlight exterior. These are big bulbs. These are 300 watt, watt you know, just giant. You know, they really have a lot of brightness to them. So I'm going to go through and put some out here. Actually, let me zoom on in there. This actually has a little indicator, kind of like the people do, of what direction it's currently facing. So I can rotate this. It's got a cone at the front. Let me rotate it around so it's pointing at the building. I actually want that floodlight to be on the wall and kind of showing me the architectural features. <coughs> So, oh, what do I want to do here? Maybe in front of the stone wall, I will go ahead and I'll copy a few. I could array these just the same. So those are all going to be pointing up at the stone wall. Where else do I want to want to? Yeah, I'll put one a little further down, too. But again, this is all part of your lighting design. Lighting designers are very good at figuring out the right locations and really what it is best to illuminate. OK, enough of the lighting. Let's go back out to that exterior view again. So here we are in the exterior view. I'm not sure if you can actually see them. There's the little floodlights. There's one right there. They're sort of intermixed in the planting. So we may or may not see them. just depends on if the planting is interacting with them or not, because the planting will block them. We'll go ahead and take a look at this. You can actually see up there, there's the pendant lights. They're kind of hanging around inside the break room. And they're hanging around down in here, too. Let's go ahead and render this just as a trial. And we'll adjust as necessary. OK. In terms of what lighting to consider, um, we can consider this. Well, actually, I'm trying to think. I'm going to go ahead and switch it so we're only considering the interior light sources. And I can say sun and artificial, but artificial only. If it's so late at night, there's not going to be any sunlight. It's not even sunset. It's a little bit later. It's almost like nighttime. Okay, I can turn those off. That'll go ahead and just sort of remove some uh, the sun from the consideration. I can go for just sort of the standard sky, which will be very, very dark. Or again, oops, I should have done it in 2011. I can choose a starry sky picture if I want and use something like that in the background. And those can actually be very, very nice. For me right now, I'm just going to go for this kind of deep midnighty blue color, something like that. OK, but the pictures can be quite nice in here, too. We'll say, oh, I'll do it low. Let me render that. OK, all the same rules are going to apply about low not bouncing the light so well. If we would turn that up to a higher level and turn on the bouncing, and the light would fill out a little bit more. Uh, we could also adjust the exposure, but let's just do this as a real quick sense to get a real quick sense of really what a nighttime rendering can look like. Okay, as it starts to build, you'll see those bright lights at the bottom. Those are the floodlights. Looks like I might want to move the floodlights a little bit closer to the stone wall to kind of get more of the effect of the floodlights looking up at the wall. It 
it's looking a little bit dark still, but instead of just going ahead and throwing more lights at it, before you do that, let's just try bringing up the exposure. See if I can get some more light out of it that way. Now, these floodlights are reading very, very bright relative to the inside, so I might want to darken the highlights, bring them down a little bit relative to it. And I'm getting some effect, but not very much. What this is telling me as I continue in my lighting design, rather than having these big old 300 watt bulbs, I may want to go ahead and lower those to like something that's only half dimmed, something like that, kind of darken them out. What else can I do? Yeah, let's start out as a starting point. To do something like that, I'd say artificial lights. I go for those spotlights, which are right here. Uh, let me even give them just like quarter uh, brightness. And when I say OK, and I try rendering that again, hopefully this will be a little bit dimmer. Now. Good practice would be to always continue saving these intermediate renderings to the project. That way you have them in your back pocket in case you don't get anything better or you just want to go back and do a comparison side by side between these different views. You can go back and kind of take a look at them later. Okay, definitely they're much less bright. They should be about a quarter as bright right now. So the effect of the light inside the building is much stronger. I would say that that quarter was probably a little bit aggressive, or a little too uh, diminishing. Let me brighten this one up a little bit. A yeah, little too bright. Not all that bad. I think maybe for my next iteration, I'd go ahead and brighten those up a little bit higher, <coughs> maybe dim those out a little bit, try and get some balance between them. Okay, but that's enough. You can go ahead and play with interior rend or these nighttime renderings and see if you can come up with something that looks good. I'll say this is the front of the building at night lights. Okay, as we're going through and doing our renderings, we've saved them to our project. That part's okay. Let's come back over here. We save them to the project or we export them as JPEGs or PNGs or TIFFs or bitmaps, whatever we want. So we can place them in other uh, documents or we can enhance them in Photoshop. But you also get to the issue of wanting to share them, wanting to the share them with the TAs, for example, or post them on your wall or whatever it is that you want to do with them. And what we do with those is we just take those renderings and we place them on sheets. So let's show you just a couple tricks for that, just so you have something in your back pocket. Okay. What I'm going to do is as follows. I'm going to create a new sheet. And you can choose any size you want. I'll choose the 24 by 36, kind of nice poster size that I like to use. I can then go out and grab the renderings. And for any of these renderings, they're showing up here in the list. If you want to put a view on the sheet, what do you do? You kind of drag it on in. Place it over there. Now you're looking at that little teeny tiny rendering in that big old sheet of paper saying, you know, this just isn't going to do. My rendering is so beautiful, I clearly need to blow that up to 18 by 24. You know, this is worthy of a poster. This is not going to be like some postage stamp. So we're going to want to resize that. Let me show you how you do that. Okay, This little guy is hanging around over there. It's on the sheet. What you really like to do is sort of stretch it, kind of make it bigger. How can you do that? Well, it starts with activating it because if you don't activate it, you're just moving it around on the sheet. When you activate it, you're actually opening it up so that you can edit it. Okay. Now, if you click on it, you'll notice there's these little blue dots that appear. And you know what blue dots mean. 
And you can pull that on out. And now that's much more befitting the quality of the, and the time that I put into this rendering. So you go ahead and make it as big as you want to. What you can do after you're done is you can uh, deactivate it. Let me right click to do that. When I deactivate, I can move it around. I can choose it. I'm in some weird space right now. Did I get the deactivate? No. I'm not sure what I'm looking at right now. Let me get a couple more renderings. There's some other ones. We'll put those out on our sheets too. So let's get another rendering. Oh, I've been collecting renderings. Let's get the conference room on there. Let's get this thing towards the offices. We'll put it in here. Go ahead and compose a nice sheet that's laid out well. Okay. As you go through and you resize your different renderings, notice that the title bars of each of the different views, okay, you know, as you drag in sheets, the length of the title bar, or drag in views, the length of the title bar is set to match the size of the view, okay? So what's happened is this has a nice title bar all the way into the view. This one has a nice title bar. This one over here has that little wimpy title bar, because remember it started out postage stamp size? Okay, the title bar is still postage stamp size. <coughs> to fix that, what can you do? This is a thing where I always sort of hate resizing the title bars because I just have a hard time remembering and then getting it done. But if you select the view, I can go ahead and get that blue dot and stretch out the title bar. And that'll work. So if you select the view, the title bar lets you stretch it. This is the one that always confuses me. If you get over the view and you want to move the title bar, just push it around, up and down, not just resize it. It's a little bit hard because you have to sort of grab it. And I usually have to tab a couple times until I finally get that thing, which I think is the title bar, and then try. Now I got the view. Okay, so tab it. I got it that time. Okay, now I got the title bar independently. Now, that's incredibly confusing to me. I never remember that about whether I'm supposed to tab first or not tab first and all that type of stuff, which is why you find me always doing this thing where I just take the view out. And then if I bring it back in again, what happens is, oh, it resizes the title bar and makes it match the view perfectly. Okay, so that's why I keep on doing that. It's just because I'm forgetful and I can never remember just exactly which of those two different operations gets the title bar to look the way you want. Okay, so here that is. I might need to shrink that down just a hair so it does or doesn't overlap. But your task is going to be go ahead and get your interior rendering, get your exterior rendering, get them on some sheets, okay, and then just turn in that sheet. And that's really, you know, <laughs> this is it. This is assignment three, at least in terms of the interior and the exterior renderings. I got an interior, I got an exterior. Exterior can be nighttime, doesn't really matter, whichever way you like, okay, and that'll get you through most of what you need, okay. Is that part clear enough? Good, okay. Let's go ahead then and we'll shift our focus to walkthroughs because walkthroughs is.